Hi, I'm Rick from Rick's Taxidermy, working with uh, Advanced Tanning Solutions. Um, what we're going to do today is do a taxidermy skin on some snakes. This is a uh, prairie rattler, a chocolate adder rattler, and a western rattler. We'll be starting off with the uh, chocolate adder, uh, doing the taxidermy skin. These snakes are not very common in the state of Colorado but you will find them. Um, they're the uh, hybridization between the Western Rattler and the Prairie Rattler. So to start off, I'm using a Havel number four handle with a ring for counterweight. And this is the uh, Havel number 23 blades. Where you're gonna wanna start is going around the rattle and then detaching the rattle from the body. So the important part is to come along the seam where the scales meet the, ta the rattle at the base. And you just go in at a rough 45 degree angle and try not to cut your scales. Once you've cut all the way through, the rattle is attached to vertebrae, so you just take the and pinch and twist, and it detaches. Now that you've made it about an inch, inch and a half down, you can push the jaws to where the head looks like a T. And then you can cut the junction. Push firmly straight down and you'll hear that crunch that you've made it through the spine. There you go, there's a second crunch, third crunch, fourth crunch. After four crunches, you are completely through the spine. And then you can peel and pull the snake away. Now, dispose of this properly. Put in a bag and twist. Make sure that nobody can get a hold of that. And then from here, we're just gonna peel it like a banana. Again, alternating sides and pulling firmly down. You will be feeling the spine pop and crackle. All you're doing is extending the spinal columns and releasing nitrogen bubbles. Once again, pulling evenly on both sides. And you can start doing what we call chasing. You get it peeled and bunched, and then you can pull the snake height down. And then just proceed throughout the entire length of this snake. Don't forget to alternate sides.
once you are able to make the mouth and jaw go through the thickest part of the body the peeling becomes much easier When you've reached roughly half the snake, the skin should just start to peel much, much easier. Once you get past the tail, as you can see that lump there, that is the tail. Put your thumb firmly behind that and pinch the two halves of your skin. Holding the snake upside down, you can see the guts and then pull. Make sure you have a firm grip between your thumb and index finger and squeezing the neck skin as well. You will reach a point where it stops. That is your vent. Proceed with your blade to cut around the vent. You'll see where the skin and flesh meet. Just continue cutting through this area and peeling little bits as you go. You will notice a very strong musky odor. That's because you are at the rattlesnake musk gland here in the vent. Just proceed to cut through that and cutting and pushing at the same time. Continue around the sides to make sure that you are free. Even spin the tail and go around the spine. And give a couple of test pulls. You will start to see where you need to cut.
Try to do your best to save as much flesh and leave it on the hide. I mean, not the hide, the uh, body. It'll save you in the uh, fleshing process. At this point, if you were interested in eating your rattlesnake, the gutting process is really simple. You just open up between the ribs and you'll see this little sack. You just grab that sack and peel it right out. Be careful, it does get a little messy. And then, where the angle of the body comes down to the rattler muscles, you don't want to be eating any of that. That's where the gland is, and if it's a male snake, that's where the hemipenes are. So go ahead and cut that there. Then, just put in your bag, take the head and neck and twist and coil your snake. Your best way to do this and take care of this meat is to freeze it. Now I have lunch. The next part to proceed with your hide is defleshing and pulling all this flesh off of the belly scales. All right, now that we're in the fleshing stage, we've positioned the snake upside down where most of the meat is gonna be. Uh, we're gonna use this little tool that comes in the kit and we're gonna start off with the rounded, more round edge to try to get in between the belly scales and the side scales. You're gonna see that it's kinda got this concave half pipe look to it this should work pretty good for the wide expansive area to flesh through here. And all you're going to need to do is just pinch down your head and push firmly and scrape. Don't get frustrated that you're not going to be able to get it all off on one uh, go. You're going to need to flesh and go over the scales a few times to get any of the remainders and little things that the bugs are gonna just eat up and ruin your, uh, your mount. And when you're going through fleshing, short strokes with a firm pressure and make sure you get that meat. If you have to, clear and proceed. Get in between the belly scales, pushing firmly, but not firm enough to cut or slice through your hide. Go with the grain always. Don't ever go backwards. Uh, going backwards, you're gonna most definitely rip it and tear it to kingdom come. Working on the edges, moving to the center, and back over to the edge.
shorter strokes work better for this. Remember, you're not in a race, there's no time limit. This takes as long as it takes. When you start getting bunching like I just did here, just take your hide and give it a little stretch and then flatten it back out and then proceed. Okay, and you just continue down towards the vent, and you'll notice that the flesh is going to get harder to remove. Down in this specific area, a couple inches above the vent and afterwards is going to be a lot tougher for you to flesh. This is where the rattle shaker muscles are and then the muscles for the uh, vent and bowel movements of the snake. Pick at these basically one scale at a time. And eventually you will get it clean. Once you've reached the vent, take your blade and straight down, cut and push at the same time. And you will start to see the flesh lifting and peeling away from the vent opening itself. Continue doing that about two or three scales from the vent. Just enough to where you can place your thumb firmly down on it and continue with your fleshing down roughly one scale or two scales at a time. Now that you've gone the, and done the first run, we're gonna clean our tool here from all the little bits that could potentially stop us from fleshing as efficiently. <clears throat> we're gonna flip it around to the flat side <clears throat> with the little round edge. We're gonna have that away from our snake because we're going to use that here in just a minute on the jaw where we still have a little bit of meat. This little piece is going to be good for pushing and peeling this little bit of meat here. And again, remember to go with the scales. And now we can straighten out our head, 
get this all flat again and then fold that back over now we are going to use that flat side I was talking about now with this part of the process you're going to want to hold your scraper at a roughly 45 degree angle the last time we were using it we were going straight up and down keeping a nice angle is going to help peel and push all that flesh off the edge and use your little round edge and your smaller round edge in the nooks and crannies in the corners that you're having difficulty. Usually by about this time you should have just minimal little pieces. Just kind of pick through and find those little spots. And flush those free. When you feel confident that you've gotten all the flesh off the belly scales, now it's time to flip it over and do the back scales. You'll notice there isn't much on the back. So one or two quick um, runs down the back of it should be more than enough. So again, we're still using that flat edge and getting in to the finer areas with our little corners. So as you continue through and you're doing your little, what I call bird pick fleshing, um, just keep in mind that a well fleshed hide will help to keep the tan soft and supple and bug free. And there's another positive. It's not going to stink. And at that point you should be done with your back and belly. Now we just need to twist and roll the hide over itself to where we can get the side of the snake nice and flat. Now you'll notice that the belly scales are going to give you a lot of resistance. You don't need it to go as flat as you did before on the belly or the back. The side scales are actually a lot uh, tougher. So if, as long as you can get it as, for the most part folded over that way, you can proceed to flesh it. One of my favorite little tricks is I'll twist, flesh, twist, flesh, and continue on, so on and so forth. Because the belly scales don't make it easy for the hide to squish on the sides. And again, just using the flat side. There isn't much flesh on the sides, so this should take just a couple of minutes. Now do the other side. There's 
This time we're flipping the snake to this side of our table and we're gonna go the opposite way. Again, with the um, grain of the scales going to my left now. And that should conclude your fleshing of your snake. The next thing you can do before you do any of the other steps, just kind of pick off anything that may have came from your table or that you didn't really flesh or that you thought you fleshed. And just give it a one quick once over. Like right there or so. Looks pretty good. Now that we're done with the uh, fleshing, remember to always take your time um, and make sure you get every little bit off and get a nice clean hide. Once we're done with this step, we can now move on to the next step in the tanning process. Welcome back to the tanning process after we've done a little skinning and flushing process of our rattlesnakes. Now we're going to start the salt bath. Essentially what this process is gonna do, it's gonna draw out the oils and the non-tannable proteins that the snakes do have, every animal has. So to do this process, what you need is uh, some salt and you're gonna need one tablespoon, one heaping tablespoon should I say, of salt per 16 ounces of water. The best way to do this to get it emulsified and combined, do your uh, hot water, add your salt, get it emulsified and mixed in, and then let this cool before you put your hides in. If you put your hides in when they're hot, you will get scale slip and the hide will start to rot. We have this set up. We're gonna take a tube skinned rattlesnake. Make sure you have enough water that these snakes can bob around and float and move freely away from one another. This is the tube skin and this one's already inside out so we're just gonna place it nice and gently. Kind of bobbing and mixing until it is completely submerged. And you let this sit for roughly two hours or thereabouts two hours. All right, and we're back. It's been about uh, roughly two hours since we've had these in the salt bath. All we need to do now is just take and discard the salt mixture and rinse the snakes in fresh water. And then we can go ahead and get it into the tan bath. So I'm gonna take these over to the back and get them rinsed. Be right back. And we're back. I've Drained and rinsed the snakes. Got them partially drying here, just for the time being. We're going to mix up our solution. The solution ratio is gonna be uh, three tablespoons for a three foot snake. And since we got two of them, we're gonna do six tablespoons. And now we're going to add some hot water to dissolve it and then cool it. And then we'll go ahead and put our snakes in the tan bath. For those of you who are wondering, this whole jar will produce enough tan for a 12 foot snake or multiple uses for smaller snakes. And there will be a chart that pops up uh, to give you exact measurements for each footage of snake. We've got our uh, snake tan solution ready to go, just like we did with the salting. We're going to keep them open 
You only need enough uh, water to make sure that the snakes can free flow. Go ahead and add them into the mix. Try to push out all any and all the air bubbles if you're getting too much floating. And all you gotta do to do that, just pull it down, give it a little wiggle, and your bubbles will come out. See, like that guy. Okay, just make sure that you move them around. Um, this mixture is a stable mixture, so you don't need to keep mixing uh, throughout the duration. All you gotta do is every now and then just kinda move the snakes. Uh, 14 to 16 hours, mixing them or moving the snakes around every so often, every four or five hours. And then we'll be back when they're tanned. And we're back. We've been uh, soaking these in our tan mixture for about uh, 14 hours overnight. You can see that we have the tube skin out here. We have the flat skin here. All we're gonna do now is we're gonna oil. Let's get this guy out of the uh, oil here. The process is just dab dry. No puddles on your skin. We're gonna lay this skin out uh, scale side up and apply our oil from there. You can see he's nice and stretchy. They've gotten plumped and they're they're tanned. So drain them off real quick. And just dab dry. Go on both sides. Get them nice and dry. You just kind of want them moist. You don't want the skin too dry or too wet, just kind of keep it moist. The uh, oil won't penetrate if it's too wet or too dry. In the meantime, while we're kind of waiting on that, I was gonna run a little bit of oil on this so that way we can get them done roughly about the same time. So we're gonna run a heavier oiling on the uh, tube skin snake. It's gonna take a lo little bit longer to dry. And just make sure you don't have any uh, little pools and just keep working it down. And it's super important to make sure you, you get it nice and worked in in the jaw and in the uh, head and the face area. That'll make it a real nice and soft and supple for the mounting purposes. So we're gonna let this sit and we'll let them dry and when we come back, we'll uh, flip them over. All right, so now we're back. I've already oiled this side while we were waiting. It's been about an hour or so that we've oiled. Until the, I came across this product, I was using the glycerin method or the denatured alcohol method. And they were coming out really crispy and not very fun to rehydrate and work with. Uh, so I started to just dry preserve. And I think this is a fantastic product and I'm gonna use it from now on. Uh, glycerin will never cross my desk again. Another cool thing about this product is this actually tans the hide. Glycerin and denatured alcohol and the dry preserves, that's exactly what they are, preserves. They don't tan it, they don't turn it into leather. It's not as workable like I was mentioning before. So this is gonna give you a nice, soft, supple, tan leather snake hide basically. We'll go ahead and re-invert this or turn it right side out. And then we'll do a light oiling on the scales. We're gonna be ready to uh, turn it right side out. Just peel it off and lay it back down. I'm using just a curtain rod, but you can use a dowel or any long skinny rod and all you're going to need to do is just kind of separate because remember we did f smush it get it to be kind of round again get past that vent and once you get enough of it you can just kind of squeeze the sides and see how it's starting to kind of plump back up it's just what you want and we're not gonna just jam it through, we're just we're gonna ease it over 
little bit by little bit. Remember, even though it's a snake and it's got tough hide, you can still rip it. Getting it started is always the bear. And you're gonna slowly grab and try to roll it over. At, at this point, if you're struggling with it like I am, go ahead and uh, remove your gloves. So that way you can get a better grip on it. The oil is, for the most part, absorbed into the hide. So you don't have to worry about getting that all over you. And we're just gonna continue trying to work this over. Be patient. And get it re-pushed over itself. Remember, you're not in a hurry, you're not trying to win a race here. There we go, now I gotta start rolling over itself. Like I said, it's a bit of a bear when you get started, but as you go, it just gets easier and easier and easier. Try to keep all the little wrinkles out. And see, it's starting to slowly get over itself. The hardest part of this is the tension of the scales. Break that tension, but don't lift your scales, so be gentle. And what will help is if you could try to open and get some more airflow in there, because you kind of made a little bit of a vacuum by putting the oil and smoothing it out and working it in. Yeah, as long as you have an air pocket in there, it tends to work a little better. And see, I'm getting bunching. Like I said, just be patient. Slow and steady always wins the race. Just keep working it down your dowel or your curtain rod or whatever you got to use. Squeeze the head, make sure you get that face open. And as you can see, it's starting to reinvert and come right side out. You're gonna hear a lot of little pops and crackles. That's just the scales releasing their grip. And you can try to pinch those away and get them away from the other scales. It's okay if you bunch in little areas, just kind of working it down. Just don't let your bunches get too big because you'll start ripping the scales. And now that you've got it most of the way down, you can take the head and pull it back towards you and just kind of give it a little pull and a little push. And it's gonna hang up in some little spots. All you do is just get it lifted up and over. And slowly push, lift it up and over where it's getting caught. Push and pull. Just like so. Now that we got that, and then we can turn around and re-slide this over and get your rod out of there. And slowly pull it off of the rear, little bit by little bit, and release that vacuum. Once it starts to go freely, 
comes right on out. And then we're going to go ahead and lay it flat and do our oil once again over the scales. Continue stretching and getting it flat. You'll know when you have it good when you have your big belly scales or side scales on the side showing. Don't forget to reapply some gloves and continue on with the oiling process. Now we got our gloves back on, we're going to go ahead and make sure we got our snake nice and flat where we need it, nice and straight, as straight as you can possibly get it, and then reapply a thin layer of oil. Remember on this process, a little bit goes a long way. Go ahead and push out that air bubble. Remember if you're going backwards at all, really, really lightly, just use your finger like a little squeegee, but not enough to lift the scales. And then we're gonna let this sit for about 30 minutes and come back to it, flip it over and reapply on the belly scale side. See you in just a few. It's been about 30 minutes now. Our snakes have absorbed and dried nicely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel this off and then we're gonna hang it. You can use cardboard or coat hangers, little sawhorses, whatever you have kind of laying around. And let it dry like that. Go ahead and let that sit overnight and go ahead and let that dry. And we're back. All the snakes are uh, dry now. Uh, you can see this is the tubed one for taxidermy. Looks really nice. Pretty soft and supple and nice and stretchy. <clears throat> what you can do if they you're having troubles uh, getting these ones to dry, you can open them up and stick them on a dowel. This one's dry, but I'll just show you kind of how we do that. So take them and you, and that separates everything. And just try to pinch them on the sides just a little bit to get them to kind of open up. Basically you're trying to fold them back the other way. And you're always gonna kind of have troubles down in here. For some reason it, they always want to stick. But if you give it just a little bit of time, remember, be patient. There we go. Now, like I said, if you have any issues with them drying, you can always slide them onto a dowel. So, he's looking really nice. And for storage, um, you can leave them like that for a little while, but if you're not gonna get to mounting that snake in it for a while, uh, soak him and freeze him, and then he'll be ready to go for you when you go to mount him. This is the uh, tube snake ready for mounting. One thing I wanted to point out again was, remember that uh, glycerin and alcohol that I talked about? Glycerin and alcohol will yellow and kind of make these uh, scales a little bit more opaque. And then you kind of lose some of your color with that glycerin and alcohol. And same thing for this snake. He's kept his color all the way around. And if you look, he's nice and pearly, beautiful white tan. This is actually tanned. Like I said earlier, glycerin's never gonna cross my desk again. This will conclude the snake tanning video. Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you have any questions, make sure to leave that comment below. 
Don't forget to uh, tan that like button and uh, go ahead and subscribe. Have yourself a good day and I'll see you next time.